Okay, let's get started. Um, today's Wednesday, so uh, Monday, we started how to do that um, return to share code on the server. Uh, we also tried the challenge over the while challenge. Uh, and I feel you guys are, most of you are struggling here. Seems like uh, most of you do not really fully understand what's going on. So today we were slow down a little bit. Um, we were look at those challenges carefully and also there are two more challenges we were look at. So the challenges uh, we did on Monday will be part of your uh, homework. Some of those, this week's homework, some of those you already did, uh, but even for some of you who successfully get us back, I sense that you do not really understand what's going on there. So uh, let's take a look. Um, besides that, today we will also talk about how to place share code at the other locations on the stack. Um, next week, we will talk about um, a more constrained scenario where we cannot even overwrite the return address. Uh, we can only override the save the EBP. Uh, also, we will talk about how to defeat um, this kind of attacks. So. Most of our modern systems, your phone, your laptop, can already defeat this kind of attacks due to a lot of the security features. Um, so uh, we were study those defensive solutions. Uh, then after that, so the second half of the class, we were talking about more advanced attacks. So what we are studying right now, those stack-based buffer overflow uh, are not very practical in real world system anymore. Uh, but they are the basis. Without understanding that, you cannot go to further advanced techniques. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we want to have a walkthrough of the uh, behemoths number one. And uh, we will do this first on uh, their server. Uh, let me get the... So behemoths, they have uh, several interesting uh, challenges you can play by yourself. Uh, we're only using this one, I think, in our class and homework, but uh, uh, you can play around, see others. So if I log in the system, so this is, this is their system remotely, and you can look around. You can see what we can find here. Uh, we can go to the folder. Where's the folder? Uh, behemoths. So in, in this folder, you can see there are um, six, seven challenges, right? Uh, each of them is a set UID program. We can execute the program. So right now we logged in as behemoths one, okay? That's our ID. Um, you log in this one because you get the password of this one. I gave you the password, right? Um, without that level one password, what you should do is you log in as uh, behemoths zero, use, their pa use a, a password for that one. Then you can run this program, behemoth zero. Um, and uh, you can say behemoth zero's owner is actually behemoths one, okay? And it's a set UID for web. So when you run this, what will happen is you can crack this, and after you crack it, you get the privilege of behemoths uh, one. So you can read the password of behemoths one, which is in another folder, <coughs> which is in uh, this folder. So we can do a cat, uh, it is, it is a behemoth password. <coughs> you can say in this folder, it has the password for everyone, for every account. So when you log in as behemoths level zero, you have to crack the password, uh, crack the program behemoths zero, which uh, has a, um, you can you can crack this program, 
then which has a privilege of behaviors one, so you can read the password of behaviors one. Okay, so for example, right now we're logging as behaviors one, so we can get it, we can uh, get its password here uh, by looking at. <coughs> We can get our password. This is the password I gave you. But we cannot get the password of the next level because we don't have the permission to do that. The only way we can get the password is to crack this set UID program. Okay. So that's what we're supposed to do. So then we take a look at the program. Uh, usually, what I do is you just run it, right? You don't know what this program does. Okay. It asks for a password. You try to uh, generate some garbage there. Try to crash the program, right? Usually, we if you can crash a program, means there is a box somewhere, and that box may be exploitable. Okay, so uh, you try to give a different uh, input here because if you want to crack something, you have to be able to input to it. You have to be able to fit it something. Okay, so looks like all of this we can uh, crack it. Okay, looks like there is a segment fault if we input the password. Okay, but we can also do a, uh, this is uh, like a behavior analysis. We run the program. We can also read the uh, disassembly of it. So from the disassembly, you can say there are not many functions. So we start with the main function and in the main function, you say there is a printf, and why there is a printf? Because when you run the program, it says password. So probably, so that is print out of the, the stream password. Then after that, there is a get function. Uh, so you know that is a vulnerable function we discussed in class because you can. Uh, so where are you putting, uh, inputting your data? You input some string there, and it will be placed on the stack, right? So look at the get function. This is a vulnerable call. Then check the parameters for this. You can say there is a before that there is a push, and this push is at EDP minus forty three. So that is where your buffer is, and you can put arbitrary long data there. Okay, so you know that then uh, you can put the share code in that forty three forty three is seventy seven so sixty seven bytes. 67 bytes plus another four bytes is 71 bytes, right? But, or you can just put a 71 bytes of garbage there, then put a long slab there, then uh, a share code. So, so what we can do is we can just use the uh, share code we had before. Let's say which one should we use? We can use the one which actually gave us a shell and has to be so this is print map uh, this one. So this is a share code we can use directly copy this. Good. So we can directly do this. Um, maybe maybe we should do Python here, not Python too. I'm not sure. Let's see. Python two? No. Uh, what syntax error? Looks like. There is a syntax. This one. Okay. So this one looks good. So we just need 71 bytes because it's 43 plus four, 43 in hex plus four. That's 71 bytes of garbage. Then we need a return address, right? And we know the return address is on the stack. So it's probably something like this. Okay. So after that, we can have a huge stack. I don't know how big we can go. Maybe try 2000. The, the bigger sled is, the higher chance you can hit the sled and eventually execute your share code. So just go with something huge. Um, if it doesn't work, then, then we just uh, do this. Don't work. 
So we we'll probably want to get a rough idea where the stack is. So we do vmh1, we set a breakpoint on main function, we run it, then we just uh, print ESP. So it's like a D6 something. So uh, this is what inside the GDB. So the GDB will push a lot of things onto the stack. So without GDB, the, the stack will be even higher. But you can say even without this, we can just guess and eventually we will be successful. Huh? Okay, so let's try again. Now we have uh, that address is D6 something, and let's just try say zero, say zero. Okay, a much higher address. Let's try again. Uh, still get segment four. Um, are we piping it? That's right. Okay, I'm not sure if 2000 is too big here. Let's try 500. But I don't want to debug this, okay? I just want to try. Uh, what else we, we can try here? This one looks good. C0 probably is too high. C0 is probably too high. We have D6 there. Then let's try uh, D8. Hmm. We're not lucky today. Let's see. A syntax error. Nope. Like D six. No. D seven. Try that one already. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, um, it's oh yeah, yeah that's but that should not give us the segment fault. Yeah, we should we needed a cat. You're right. Yeah, but it should not give us a segment fault here. Yeah. So we have a D nine. A. Hmm. 71 is correct, right? 71 bytes. This one is correct. This one we can make a little bit bigger. The share code is correct. So we're, we're just not lucky. So keep trying. Make this maybe bigger. Oh, now I make this set bigger than we somehow hit it. Okay, see, so then now, because this is a set UID program, so if I check for my, I'm actually behemoth two, okay? Then now we have a shell. We, we only have a very simple shell, that's a dash, but we can still catch uh, the password. Well, the, the problem with a dash is you cannot do the tab, so you have to type everything. So we do behemoth, um, Pass two. I think I think that's a file. Okay, so you can get the password from the level two. If you copy this password, then you uh, log out. Okay. Now I logged out, this is my local machine. And uh, if we want to uh, connect to that machine to play the next level, what do you need to do is uh, you just uh, you just uh, SSH in again, but this time use level two instead of level one. So let's, let's try that. Uh, I need the password here first then. I copy this one. So now we are going to log in as a user level two and use the new password. This is our new level two's password. 
now we're in now we're in level two so that's it that's how you play uh, those four games so if you check the website over the while over the wire yeah over the You can see they have uh, um, a lot of war games for you to play. Um, you can start with the easy ones like Bandit. So for Bandit, uh, you're actually practicing your uh, Linux command skills, not really hacking. Uh, after that, you just play with this um, order. So for example, crypto, looks like this is about crypto. Then after that, you have uh, uh, Ladia, probably have some software vulnerabilities, some behemoth or software vulnerability, only seven levels. Then there are harder ones. Uh, I also choose maze, one of the maze, as one of the examples for next week, I think. Uh, then there is a vortex. Vortex has some uh, more realistic um, challenges and the 27 levels. So at your free time, this is what you can play with if you are really into this. Okay. So if we want to do the same challenge uh, on our server, If you want to do the same challenge on our server, uh, it's just totally exactly the same binary. Okay, the only difference is the uh, uh, underlying operating system is different. Uh, we run a latest version of Ubuntu server, um, and uh, the share we have will not give you will not inherit the root privilege. That's why you cannot use the old uh, share code. The, the share if you use the old share code you will get a share but that share will not have uh, the root privilege even though this is a root uh, set uid program so that's why in our system you have to use um the other share code uh, which gives you which read the uh, flag directly Uh, professor, we can't hear you.
Was it was it muted uh, at the beginning? <laughs> okay, okay, guys, I'm sorry about that. I didn't realize I muted. Um, okay, okay. Well, we haven't started talking about anything new anyway. Okay, um, so think about those conditions that we uh, we depend on to pull off the attack. Why is that important? Because those are the conditions the attacker sees. So most of cases, we're not playing the role of an attacker, we're playing attack, uh, the role of a defender. So as long as you take one of those conditions off, the attacker has to find a new way to attack it. If you take all the conditions off, it may make it very difficult for the attacker um, to um, crack your system. Okay. So this is a very good practice. Think about what really makes this attack possible. So I would say there are a lot of conditions. Uh, we have to do a lot of things. First, we actually put a piece of share code, which is several uh, 20, 30 bytes uh, on the stack. And we give the control to that share code on the stack. But a stack is where we store data. It's not supposed to be executable, but in our program, it is executable. For many, many years, the stack is, for the operating system, stack is executable, okay? We will show, show you next week, the current, uh, most recent systems, we do not uh, allow execution on stack anymore. Uh, also, we have, we need the ability to override the return address on the stack uh, before, the return instruction is executed. So we can somehow subvert the control flow to our program. Well, this condition also can be loosened a little bit. You can write overwrite any code pointer. Maybe there is a function pointer, you overwrite that. Then some at some point that function pointer is called and then it goes to your uh, share code or your malicious code. Okay, that all happens. So, so today I'm going to show you um, another two techniques uh, that we are still injecting share code onto the stack, but we're not injecting uh, using the vulnerable gets function anymore. We are going to inject the share code uh, into onto the stack in environment variable and also uh, command line arguments. So previously we have say two different places we can place the um, share code. One is the vulnerable buffer itself. Of course, that buffer has to be big enough to hold the share code. Uh, also, we can put the uh, share code at an even higher location than the return address. Which, so in those cases, we do not have a space limit. We can have a huge step to increase our uh, chances. Um, to understand uh, why uh, why we can inject a share code in other places, uh, we can uh, we need to understand how a process works. Uh, most C programmers, you do not really think about the problem. You only develop your your own function. You start with the main function, but you don't think about uh, who calls your main function. You have um, um, many other functions, your main function were eventually called, but uh, you do not think about who calls uh, the main function. All right. Um, in your program, after you compile your program, uh, actually, there is a start function, um, underscore start function. That is part of your program. That is what the compiler will generate for your program. And that program, that function is uh, I'm not sure it's a function. It's probably, well, when we say it's a function, it has a, a frame, it has a push, EDP, move EDP to ESP, those kinds of things. It just be, be a piece of code. Okay, so that is the entry point of your program. So the operating system will give the control of the CPU to the um, underscore star. Okay, then that underscore star, that piece of code, will eventually call a C library function called the um, underscore underscore uh, leap C start main function. And that function will set up the stack 
where um, I provide the, a lot of uh, environmental variables to, to the command line arguments for your main function. Then it will call your main function. That's what actually calls your main function, what you develop. So, so this slide roughly shows you uh, what the stack looks like before the main function executes. You have been saying, I draw the stack, but usually that's not the main function, that's after the main function, right? So before the main function, this is usually what the stack looks like. The stack always goes from high address to low address. Um, so for the, the main function, let's say the main function uh, function for me somewhere here. On top of that, it will have uh, uh, arcs, because the main function has a prototype, right? It has a arc, arc C, arc V environment P, right? So th this is basically what it looks like. It first it has an arc C, which tells you how many command line arguments are there, tells the program basically, because the program doesn't know how many command line arguments are provided to him. That's by the user when you type that in the terminal. So the, so the, the main function needs to figure out this arc C. Then after that, there are um, three pointers, which is arc V zero, arc V, uh, actually there could be more, depends on how many arc, uh, uh, command line arguments you have, right? So each of these, in this, in this case, um, there are three. I'm running a program called a stack layout. It has hello. It, when I run this program, I give it two command line arguments, hello world, and I'm making this whole thing three command line arguments. The first one is the name of the program. The second one is hello. The third one is word. Now, those are all strings. So those strings will be copied to the memory space of the program stack layout. And uh, they are copied uh, onto the stack like this. So uh, in this case, we have three arc That's why there are three pointers. Those three pointers will eventually point to uh, those three strings. One is program, or well, this one should be stack layout. Then it will be hello, that's a string. A word, that's another string, okay? So after that, there were are also environment variables. There are many more, not only three here. So they will be pointing to the strings of environment variables. So let's say if we run this program here, we do a EV on here, we can say all the environment variables right now are set for this terminal. So those environment variables, each of them is a string. This is a string. The string is a shell uh, equals to this. The whole thing is a string. The whole string will be copied directly to the memory space, okay? To over any program created by the shell. So there are, you can see for this one, there are probably a 10 to, well, fewer than 15 environment variables. So if we run the, uh, let me first show you the source code of uh, stack layout program. You can see it's a, what? This is a program we are running called a stack layout. This program is very simple. Uh, don't do many things. Just print out the address of uh, everything here. The first one is, well, this is a main function prototype as arcsy, arcv environment. And those are those two are uh, two degree pointers, pointers are pointers. This one is just the int. So this 
program just to print out where each variable is. First, uh, uh, where arc C is, then just to print out uh, three of arc V, three of the environment of variables. There'll be more of those, right? So if we run this program on our server, I just show you the source code. We run this program on the server, you can find out um, the address of everything. You can say, I'm only running this program. Uh, I'm only typing the name of the program. So arc C is just the one, okay? Then arc V zero will point to the name of the program and its address is D744, okay? Then uh, the second argument, there is no, there is no argument anymore. There's no command line argument anymore. So it's zero and its address is uh, 48, but it'd be higher than that, right? Then you can say environment variable here. Um, uh, this one, this one is actually an environment variable. It's not the, it's not the, you can say it's the same address, okay? It's not really, um, well, this is actually a C overweight, right? Okay. Um, you can say the environment variable, we have the share, we have the host name, we have the current uh, directory. That's the same thing when we do it here. That's the same thing, okay? Because those same things are copied to the address space of the program. So if we run this program again with uh, more arguments, right now we have, uh, we're using one, two, three, four, totally five, okay? Remember, whatever I type here, this is not an integer. This is just a string. The string is uh, three and five, okay? So you can say now we have five values, five argument command line arguments, and their address is at uh, those locations. Okay, so that shows you how things are copied to the stack. Um, if we just debug this, let's say we debug this, we are going to run this with uh, some uh, arbitrary. Uh, strings. Okay. We, oh, we should set a breakpoint first. We set a breakpoint at the main. Then we run this. Some, some random things. Okay. Like I said, those random things should be unstacked. Also, those environment variables should be unstacked, right? So can we find them? Um, what we can do is we can just examine the stack from where the uh, ESP is right now. And we know those things are strings. So we just do, uh, so X is exam, the forward slash after forward slash, you can say how many um, items you want and what kind of item you want. So here I'm just do a string. Let's just do 100 strings at the ESP. So let's see if we can find those things. Um, same so the garbages. Um, what was our input? I don't remember. Okay, let's do maybe 500. We should be able to find those things. Okay, we find it. You can see we start from the current ESP of the main function. We set a breakpoint at the beginning of the main function. And uh, then we try to go for the higher addresses and we know eventually we can find those strings, the command line arguments and also the environment variables. And between those, there are a lot of uh, garbage in between. Those could be the local variables of the function cause our main function, which is the, which is the leaf state uh, start main function. So you can say uh, those are the command line arguments and we have all the uh, environment variable there as well, okay? So, so um, next, uh, we're going to say uh, another challenge. And in this challenge, uh, you, you will tell me, you tell me what, what is the challenge here? And why we cannot use the technique we use uh, this Monday to crack this program, okay? Uh, the same main function, the main function called Volfu, uh, the Volfu has a local variable buffer, state level four bytes. Doesn't mean binary level four bytes. We will figure out binary level how many bytes it has. 
then there is a vulnerable function called fgets. Um, fgets is a little bit different from gets. Gets, you can input uh, as many, uh, it will copy uh, as uh, um, many uh, uh, as many bytes as possible until it finds uh, a new line character, not a zero. Fgets is a little bit different. Fgets, it has a argument to tell you how many bytes it wants to copy, okay? So in this case, uh, I put 18 there, I copy from STD in, I copy to buffer. Then after that, we return. So that is uh, the vulnerable uh, function. So if we look at the disassembly of Valfu, uh, which I will just show you on site, we, we can do it on the server later. You can say this is a fget function. And uh, fget has three arguments. The first argument is the one we care about. That's the location of the buffer, right? And the location of buffer, since it's the first one, it pushed onto the stack last. So, so this one is pushing that buffer's address. And we know from here it's EDX. So we, from here we know it's actually EDP minus eight, okay? So what does that mean? EDP minus eight, which means the buffer is eight bytes. And we can overwrite um, 14, we can overwrite 18 bytes uh, in total. Um, that means uh, also the fget function, it were actually attached to bytes at the end, which is uh, 0a and the 00. 0a zero. Zero is a new line, I believe. 00, zero is just uh, the end of the string, right? So actually, uh, even though at a C level, it says 16 bytes, uh, you can actually input it. It's 18 bytes here. What you can actually input is 16 bytes. Okay, which means exactly you can only overwrite eight bytes of buffer, four bytes of saved EDD, and four bytes of return address. Okay, so what what's the problem here? If we want to, our goal is to get the flag. What's the problem here? Why the techniques we use for the humors or overflow level or four doesn't work here? Exactly, right? You technically the space for you is only eight bytes here, right? You you don't have enough space to put share code here. That's why our approach to uh, inject share code in environment variable or command line works now. So we know that when the program runs, those things will be copied to other addresses. So technically, we, we can put the share code um, in the environment variable or uh, just the command line. Let's, let's try that. And there is no size limit. Well, almost no size limit. Right. Um, then, then let's try this. So this is uh, the command to uh, create a new environment variable. Um, oh, we need to go to another challenge, right? Which one is it? Level five. Level five square two bit. So we can just uh, export this. Uh, okay. okay, so I am creating a new environment variable for the S code. The name doesn't matter. You can you can choose any name. Well, right, let's choose another name. Uh, let's say. Well, I think it has to start with uh, a letter. I don't. I'm not sure if you can put uh, put uh, numbers in the environment variable. Maybe not. Let's just do SSS. Okay. 
So we create a new um, So when we try to export this, what happens? It says command line substitution ignored uh, lower bytes in input. So those zero bytes are replaced. Okay, because the share I'm using doesn't allow zeros in that. If I do this on my local computer, my local computer, my share, they share doesn't complain. My they share doesn't complain. Okay, I can put it. I can put the share code here. I can do uh, environment where or I can do this, and I can say, hey, this is my share code there. Okay, but if I do it on our server, it doesn't work. Um, it will replace those zeros, and um, it will not be so. Um, so basically, this is not our value share code because zero has been replaced. Um, where is it? It's uh, here. Okay. Um, so you can see our goal here is if we want to set the share code uh, on the stack, what we need to do is we need to remove those zero bytes. Okay. So let's look at this code a little bit and think about how we can remove the zero. Um, let's say the first one is 667 is actually with 32 bytes, 68, 68, uh, 67. Uh, then we have this move five to EAX. That's a problem because here we're moving four bytes, not only one byte of five, four bytes of five, which means zero, 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 five. Okay. And uh, if we go to the um binary code you can say there are three zeros five okay so how can we remove those ones and you can say there's another zero there's another zero this 100 is zero okay so to remove that uh, it's not that uh, difficult you just find the equivalent instructions which do not have a zero but uh, do the equi equivalent things for example here we're moving five to eax well, then what we can do is we can do um, X or EX, EX, which will change the EX value to zero. Then we do increase five times, right? Or we can do a move five to A, L directly, okay? Then you can say here we have uh, ECX move, move zero to EZ. That's easy. We just do a X uh, or ECX, ECX, right? Then this one, uh, move 100. So 100, this thing, how many bytes is this? How many of you realize how many bytes is this number here? 100 in hex. What? No, not the number. How many bytes? How many bytes it takes at least? Not, not the um, decimal value of that. It takes two bytes, right? Zero, zero is one byte. Zero, one is a lot of bytes. Okay. So, what you can do with this one is you can, and you don't want to have a zero in your code. So, you can move what I'm doing here is I first I uh, set the value of uh, ESI of zero. Then I move this value 101 to SI. SI is two bytes. I'm not moving 100 to SI. If I move 100 to SI, one byte will be zero. So I'm moving 101 to SI, then I just uh, decrement this one. So it's here, I get the 100. So that's how we get the equivalent um, a piece of uh, assembly code. There. And this, when you look at this one, there is no zeros anymore. So if we copy this one, so those two instruct those two share codes they are equivalent, but this one doesn't have any zeros. You'll also notice that I have a five hundred bytes of slat there. You can make that bigger if you want. Okay, so now we can 
we can set this. Uh, I'm just going to use an S code anyway. So now we successfully set the share code into the environment variable. If we check the environment variable, S code is this. Well, there are many more characters after, but they are not uh, printable. That's why we're not saying that. Okay, so they are unstacked. Well, a tool we can use is I, I have a lot of tool for you guys. It's on this it's in this folder called the uh, get environment 32. Uh, we can use this tool to get an exact location of um, the environment variable. You can do this, you do SSS, you get the address, my code tells you where it is. Um, S code, where it is. Well, but since I don't know what we're doing, is based on guessing. We don't really need this, right? Oh, by the way, this address, DA, for example, here, DA89, that point exactly to the beginning, to the beginning of the whole thing, the S code equals one, okay? What does that mean? It means the share code is not here. Like I said, the environment, the whole thing, the name, the value, the whole thing is a string. Okay, the share code is actually um, several bytes higher than that address because that address points to the string S code, not points to our share code. Okay, so we can well now we know the share code is uh, this address plus something plus five or six. But uh, since we have a big flat, we can uh, plus uh, much bigger. So now we can try to uh, exploit the program. What should we do here? We are we're still overwriting, right? So we're still overwriting. So we're doing Python 2 print. How many bytes of garbage do we need from that slice? Eight bytes, then four bytes, so 12 bytes in total, right? So we just need the 12 bytes of garbage. Then we have uh, four bytes of address, and we already know where it is. So it's, uh, we printed out is this one, but it will be higher. We have 500 bytes of uh, sled anyway, so we can do D, uh, we can do DB, that's secure, right? DB should work. So that's it. We overwrite those 16 bytes. F gets where a ton two more bytes, which we cannot control. Uh, then the whole thing we pipe into the program. And it gives it gives us the flag because we already placed the share code onto stack. Okay, the share code is now here. Okay. So this is the first approach. The second approach is we can also do the same thing instead of putting the uh, in the in the uh, stack uh, no, 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 in the environment variable we can directly put in the command line arguments so how do we do that let's say so here we, we have a pipe here but we also need the command line arguments so so how do we unset a uh, environment variable? Is, is that unset? If it's unset, okay, let me check. Okay, the, the, you can see the environment variables, they're not here anymore. The, those two share codes, they're not here anymore. Um, so we are going to use a new way to put the share code into the address space. Mm, let's see. Okay, I think we probably should do this way. Let's put the exploit into a file. So this one is technically our exploit. We put this into a file. Um, this address may not be right anymore, right? This address was pointing to the environment variable. So now we are going to point to the command line. Well, maybe almost the same address because the command line arguments will be huge. We are going to have a big thread there, right? Okay. Now we put this is how we put the environment uh, command line arguments. We put it here, right? So we want to put something 
uh, the the share code. That's why. Oh, where are the share codes? That's this is our share code. So we copy this whole thing. So when you when you do the dollar sign the command here, when you type this, what happens is inside this dollar sign, this command will be executed first. So the Python code will be executed first, generate the share code string. Then this new process will be created. So that share code, that shares, uh, share code, the string will be uh, inputted as a, um, a command line arguments. Mm, after this, we should also take some input from uh, which is our actually exploit. That's fine. So we get a segment sort. Mm. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Then here segment sort, which means we need to change the address. So what address should we use? Previous was DB. Um, let's try with some more address first. Oop, got lucky. Okay, so I change it to a lower address, then we uh, hit that. Okay, but by the way, here I don't think we have to use a share code without zeros. Let me, let me check, let me try. I haven't tried that. So this is our share code the with zeros. This is our share code with zeros. Uh, let's see if it works. Um, oh, no, still, the bash do not allow you to do that. So you still have to use the share code with all zeros. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, um, this symbol here, the next time symbol here, uh, this is what happened in the past year uh, to STD. Yeah. It's the same as what you are doing with typing there. However, I don't think the syntax works that way. I'm not sure if you can. Um, let, me, let me try. It may work. Um, let's see. What is the correct? Uh, which one works? This one works, right? Yeah, this one works. Let's try. Yeah, I think I think the piping also work. Uh, yeah, what you can do is you can do a cat. Uh, temp, I guess here, and this one. Uh, I think this should work. Yeah, it works. Uh, but um, let's say if we can do two Python here, I think it also works. So basically, we want to do two Python here. What, what's the other one? Oh, the, the second one. Python to print um, a times 12. Okay, what, what's the address we're using? FF, FF, D6 something? D6, okay. Uh, I, yeah, I think this one works as well. Yeah, this one also works as well. Just uh, sometimes I like to pipe things back just to put things in the file so the command will be shorter. Simple, but you can say they, they all work. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there will be some strings, syntax constraints, so you have to you know play around with those um, topics. Yeah. So that is basically how we put the share code on the command line argument and also the environment variable. So you can technically do the same thing for the sixty bit four bit version. Um, So that's basically what I want to talk about today. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, more advanced topics uh, next week. Um, so for the rest of the class, I want to show you the homework of this week. 
So you can get a feeling what you are going to do. And if you have any questions, uh, ask me now. Uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, uh, done a lot this week. Uh, so there are several important readings I wanted to read. The first one is called Smash the Stack for Fun and Profit. That is the original frag paper on uh, stack based on buffer overflow back in the 80s. So that is the original one. Um, no, not 80s, 90s. That is the, that is the one um, taught many people about uh, this technique. Before that, it was kind of like dark magic. Uh, only a very small um, group of people know how it works. Um, then I gave you some readings about uh, why do we need to do a cat there. Uh, also, uh, there are uh, why using GDB and the, without GDB, the stack look a little bit different. Um, and also the very first uh, Morris one, the, the one developed by the professor at MIT, he, he was a graduate student at Cornell. Um, he used the buffer overflow to uh, basically um, crack the, I don't know, 30% of the computers in the internet at that time. Yeah. Okay, in the homework, you are going to reproduce what I did in class, uh, written level four, um, place the share code uh, lower than the return address, higher than the return address, and also a 64 bit version. I don't really care where you put your share code as long as it works. Uh, then, uh, behemoth number one, level one, uh, behemoth level one on our server. Then there is another crack me four. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what how this one works. You need to figure out uh, how you can uh, crack the program and to get the um, get the fact. Uh, more interestingly, uh, that's why I want to show you this. Is this week we have a a bonus question. You get you get eight points more if you crack the crack me four H version. Okay, you only need to crack the 34 bit, uh, 30, 32 bit. Okay. Um, so the first time I created this crack before, I made a mistake. And uh, um, I think it's two years ago, and um, most of the students couldn't solve that. Uh, then I realized I made a mistake there. It is still exploitable, but much harder. Uh, that's why uh, it's uh, crack me. That's the basically crack me four version. Okay, for H version, hard version. Okay, the easy version is the same as what we're doing in class almost, but the harder version, uh, there is a trick. You need to fully understand what's going on there, nine by nine. So that's why I gave this as a as a, a bonus question. Okay, any questions so far? Yeah. That's a very good question. Uh, it's on, on my GitHub, but uh, I haven't used the crack me three for a year. I don't remember what happened to that. I need to go back and check to what happened to that uh, crack me. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's because it's almost the same as crack me two, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Other questions? Okay, good. So um, today, like I said, I slowed down a little bit. We still have 20 minutes. So we can start working on the homework. I'm going to walk around to help you. Um, uh, I'm trying to slow down. I see most of you are struggling. Mom, yeah. Yeah. This one? Okay. One of the inputs, this one, because this is piped into the program, right? So that goes to go um, to STDE. So the program will read that from STDE. The second piece is a command line argument. This is a command line argument, right? So the shell or the loader will push this string to the address space of the program. But the program itself, doesn't really necessarily going to use it. Remember this this program, uh, so for, uh, like the like the layout, the stack layout program, right? 
uh, we can put 100 command line arguments here. But the program itself, if you look at the main function, you only look at the first three, right? Because the loader doesn't know what the program does. The loader will only do what the user types here, copy that to the set. So here, the program doesn't need this to run, right? But we can still somehow inject this into its address space. So that's why without this, this program can still run. Yeah, it doesn't change its behavior. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Okay, then you can start. Yeah, go ahead. Which one? RV? Yeah. Um, it's not it's not fixed. So yes. So basically, so your command line arguments that value is placed on uh, RC, right? Then depends on how many RC here. Then you have the you will have how many uh, RV items there. In this case, it's three. That's why there are three. If there are more than three, then there will be more than three. But after that, there is a zero byte. Yeah. The, the environment variable, the same thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do that soon. Oh, you have a question there? Yeah. Which one is not on? Yeah, it's not it's not there yet. I'm going to push it through. Yeah. Okay, let me let me push everything now so you can have a better website. Oh, yeah, that's the way of.
think I should be there soon. What? Ready? Oh yeah. Well, you you can you can change that, right? <laughs> you know where I put it. I just do not add the link there. So. recently, I don't know what's going on with that. Used to be super fast, but somehow that push it there. Oh, but the fire is already there, so you can access that. What's going on? So, so well, the homework was there, so you can just uh, well, for example, you get the last week's homework, right? You get the URL at the at the bottom. I don't know why it's so slow. source code.
and the other one where it's just here. So basically, I think that's a cool tool that I can get to the mind. I cannot find a source code. Search here. Okay, find the source code. It's uh, in, it's here. So uh, it's very simple. Um, it's just a call a function, a library function called the called a library function called get environment. We give that the name of the environment variable, then then we call the function get the address, print out the address. That's it. So if you want to know how to use that one, just get environment. So you can get so this is this is basically all you can use that function. Okay, now you can you can find the notes and
Any questions from those online folks? 